Today's lesson is all about using scientific notation, but in a different way, doing some computation with it. Now, normally this is not an everyday skill. It's not something that you're going to use in everyday life, except in some professions. Um, scientists, NASA, things of that sort. Um, you are going to need your spiral notebook and calculator if you have one handy. You certainly can work it out longhand, but calculator can be handy there. And also, know what the word factor means. Remember, for scientific notation, you have a number in the front, anywhere between 1 and 10. And then you've got times 10 with an exponent. The number in front is called your factor. This 10 with an exponent is called the power of 10. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Adding and subtracting. Now, adding and subtracting of scientific notation can be a little tricky. You really have to understand which way you're moving your decimal point and what to do with that exponent. So here we have 5.32 times 10 to the fourth and 6.21 times 10 to the third. Notice how both of these scientific notations have different powers of 10. The first thing you're going to want to do is change so that the exponents are the same. Right now you have a 4 and a 3, and you want to change them so they are both the same. Now, you can do that in different ways. You can change them both to be 4s or both to be 3s. That's your choice, really. You can see here that I chose to do this one and make this one a power of 3. So I moved my decimal point back one space, which made me subtract one from my exponent. Now they are both powers of raised to the power of 3. So now I'm going to add or subtract my factors according to the problem. Here we're adding, so I'm going to add the now 53.2 with the 6.21. So you're going to add those two together, adding your factors. You're going to keep whatever power of 10 that you try to make the same. Here we put them both as 10 to the third power, so we're going to keep it as 10 to the third power. And finally, you're going to take your new answer, 59.43 times 10 to the third, and you're going to change it and adjust it and put it back in proper scientific notation. Remember, this factor must be between 1 and 10, and right now it's at 59. So we're going to move that decimal point forward one. That will make me add one to my exponent, and now I'm in the proper scientific notation. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Really study the example and make sure you understand the steps and copy down the rules here, and that will help you in future problems. Okay, now I would like you to try some. Go ahead and pause the video, work these out. Remember to follow those steps, and then come on back and we'll go over them together. All right, for this problem here, notice the exponents are different. We want to make them be the same. Now I chose to make this one be a 5. You certainly could do the other way. I am going to move my decimal point, making this 10 to the 5th power. Do you know what I'm going to do with the decimal to make that to be 10 to the 5th? I want to subtract 1, so I'm moving it this way. So I've got 12 now. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the rest of my problem here. Now that they both have the same power of 10, now I'm going to take the factors and add them together. And here's where your calculator can come in handy. If you add 12 plus 3.4, or 12 plus 3 and 4 tenths, you get 15.4, or 15 and 4 tenths. I'm going to keep my power of 10. And now my last step is to make sure it's in proper scientific notation. Here this is a 15. Remember it has to be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to be moving this decimal point over. And did you remember what to do with the exponent when you move it in that direction? You're going to add 1. So this is 10 to the 6th power. All right, take a look at this one. Again, we want to make the exponents be the same. So I chose to make this one 10 to the 11th power. In order to do that, I'm going to move my decimal this way. Now that my exponents are the same, now I'm going to take my two factors, and this time I'm subtracting them. So you're going to subtract 68.1 and 2.5. And again, you can use your calculator for that step. comes out to be 65.6. Okay? Notice my exponents are the same. I'm going to keep that. 
Now I need to check and make sure it's in proper scientific notation, so I'm going to take this and slide it back over. Do you remember what that does to the exponent? If I'm sliding it over this way, I'm going to be adding. All right, now let's take a look at multiplication. What do I do if I'm multiplying scientific notations? Well, here are the steps. The first thing I think is beneficial is to break that down into steps. You've got a factor here that's being multiplied by a power of 10. No symbol in between. What does that mean? Right, to multiply. And then you've got another factor being multiplied by the power of 10. So all I've done is breaking down all of those um, scientific notations into separate pieces, separate units. Now I can use my commutative property to change the order of the problem and put my factors together and my power of tens together. And I can use my associative property to go ahead and group those. If I multiply this, and if you use your calculator, you'll see you get this answer. Do you remember your exponent rules when you multiply with the same base? You add the exponents, remember? And now we're going to put it back in proper scientific notation. Always check your final answer to be sure it's between 1 and 10. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Really study the example and write down the rules. And then we're going to talk about division as well. All right. Last but not least is division. So here's my problem. What we're going to do is we're going to take the factors and divide them. Because remember, a fraction is a division problem. So you're doing 4.2 divided by 2. And now you're going to take your powers of 10 and use your exponent rules. Remember what to do for dividing exponents with the same base? You subtract them, right? 6 minus 2 gives you 4. Now this already is in proper scientific notation. It is a number, the factor is a number between 1 and 10, so you're all set. Here's another example using a negative. Divide the two factors. You can use your calculator for that one. And now for the powers of 10, you're going to subtract them. So negative 3 minus 3, remember those integer rules, it's negative 6. Again, my factor is between 1 and 10, so I'm all set and I don't need to do any more movements. All right, see if you can try these. Give them a try, pause the video, and then come on back and I'll go over them. Please don't shake that. Get down. Thank you. All right, remember, break it down into parts. We've got a 3, a 10 to the negative 7, a 9, a 10 to the 3rd. Go ahead and put the factors together. 3 times 9 is 27. And now as far as the powers of 10, remember, you want to add them. So what is... Negative 7 plus 3. It's negative 4. Don't forget that important step. Make sure it's in proper scientific notation. We're going to slide this decimal over. Do you remember what that does to the decimal? We want to add 1. Well, what's negative 4 plus 1? Negative 3. Okay, and now this last one. Hopefully you used a calculator here and divided those two numbers. You should have gotten 27 hundredths. And remember what to do with the decimal, I mean the exponent? We're going to subtract them, right? 4 minus negative 7. Remember? Remember your integer rules. 4 plus 7, right? So you should get um, 11, right? Okay? And now we want to put it back in proper scientific notation, so we're going to move that decimal back. And what happens when we move it back is we add one, and there's your, oh, I'm sorry, subtract one. Wait a minute, subtract one. We're going to do some more practice problems in class. See you soon.